Hey guys, Nick Smith here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create an action in Photoshop. Now previously I showed you how to copy adjustments from one photo to another inside of Lightroom and inside of Photoshop, and then I demonstrated how to make presets in Lightroom. Now what actions are is they're basically presets, but they're inside of Photoshop and they're really easy to run, but they're a lot more flexible and can do more than just a preset in Lightroom can. So if you watched my previous video on how to set up your workspace like mine, you should notice it looks exactly like this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to this little play button and click that. That's the actions panel. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click this little menu here and it's like new set. And I'm going to name this action example and you can name this whatever you want. Uh, it'll vary depending on what you want your actions to be called. So now that we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit this little page down here. And what that does is it starts a new action and we can name this whatever. I'm going to name it tone one because I'm going to do a few different toning examples in this. So first thing, I'm going to make a curves adjustment and I'm going to make kind of a simple edit here with curves and just a little bit of an S curve to give it a little more contrast, kind of pop the highlights a bit. And I'm going to lift the blacks here. That's a kind of popular trend on Instagram is to have those crushed blacks. Usually they kind of take it up more extreme to something more like that, but I, I don't like to go overboard with it. If we give it a quick toggle, we can see it has that nice kind of pop to it. Uh, it's not too much, it's not too little, kind of gives it a nice look. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up a selective color layer and let's go ahead and switch to neutrals. I rarely touch the other things just depending on it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do plus two cyan. Uh, I don't really think magenta, I'm gonna rock either way. Let's put a little more yellow in the neutrals, then let's go ahead and play with the black, see if we wanna add more or less contrast. I think let's go ahead and just leave it at zero. Now let's go ahead and tone the shadows here. I think I like a little cyan. some magenta and adding blue by taking away yellow and then let's see do we want to fade it or do we want to go ahead and actually increase the contrast here instead and I think I want to increase it like that so I'm gonna go ahead and select that and we can do a quick another adjustment and what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, create a black and white layer and then we're going to change the blending mode to soft light and then let's lower the opacity to something like 20 and you'll see that just kind of adds a little more contrast and it's almost like a very fast way to dodge and burn because it just accentuates all the highlights and shadows really easily so I think that looks really nice and let's go ahead and create a group for this and let's name it tone one. And now let's go back to our Photoshop actions panel here. And then let's go ahead and stop it. And what that does is it's been recording all the different stuff we've done so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this initial group. And now let's go ahead and come back up here, click on the tone one, and then hit play. And that should build our action exactly how we did it. And if we look, we have that tone here and It'll actually load onto any photo you want to use this on. So I'm going to quick go ahead and open up another one just for demonstration here. All right, so I just loaded up another photo from this same set. And I'm going to quick go ahead and open up the actions panel. I'm going to run this action of tone one on it just to show you that it does copy over exactly the curves adjustment layer that we did. It copies over the selective color layer. And then it copies over the black and white kind of contrast enhancement layer. So altogether, it'll copy everything over. And I think I might actually take away the black and white adjustment layer. I think it's almost too contrasty for this image. So uh, that's why we have this action with different layers, because it's super flexible to just kind of go ahead and toggle it on and off and see what adjustments we're making. Or uh, we can even go ahead and lower opacities like this. Uh, so we don't want as much from either. We can kind of we can kind of lessen the total effect that it actually applies like that. So next what we're going to do is let's go ahead and make a new action just because I want to do two demonstrations here. And let's go ahead and delete this. And let's go ahead and start another one. And we'll do tone two. Like so. And then let's go ahead and 
make a curves layer. And this time I actually want to do some coloring and curves, not just contrast adjustments, but I'm also going to go for a slightly different look. I'm going to go for a more muted kind of photo, which has been slowly uh, becoming a trend in editing. I'm not a huge fan of it, but you know what? It's a good example once again. So let's go ahead and kind of create something like that. So we just kind of decontrasted this photo a lot. So now I'm going to create a different kind of color toning in this. So I'm going to use color balance instead of selective color because it's uh, very similar, but it kind of has a slightly different effect to it. If you look, it's a little stronger. This is taking a little more to get the colors where I want them. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and add a levels adjustment. And levels are slightly different. Basically what it is is it just kind of controls where your midpoint is and what uh, considers pure white and pure black. And I want this to be a little more of a pop to it here. still want it kind of decontrasted on the highlights so I'm not gonna make it too contrasted okay and now just for fun let's go ahead and do some vibrance and desaturate it just a little bit And once again, just for some fun, let's throw a solid color on it. Let's do some kind of like orange here at about 3% opacity. Maybe change the color a little. See, so can we do five? Five is a little too much, maybe four. Yeah, four looks good. I like the way four looks. Okay, so let's go ahead and group these all together. And we do that just by holding shift, selecting, and then hitting G. And let's go ahead and name it Tone 2. And let's go stop our action. And by the way, when you toggle things on and off to check, it also records that on your action which can get cluttered, so it's better to usually go ahead and plan your action out ahead of time and then go step by step and record it, just because that way you don't have all those extra steps in your action built in. So it's really more beneficial to kind of plan it out. I'm kind of doing this on the fly just to demonstrate, but when you make your own actions, plan it out ahead of time, get all your adjustments made, figure out exactly what you want to use, so that way it's a much cleaner action, it's more simple, and uh, it's an easier run through for your computer because it can actually slow it down if there's those extra steps. So let's go ahead and switch over to this other image and then let's run Tone 2 and see how that works on this image. And if you notice, it uh, actually brings up the background a lot and has a way different look to it than the original kind of tone. Um, it, like I said, I was going for a more muted look and it definitely is pretty successful on this photo. It definitely kind of decontrasts and desaturates. So as you can see, this is a great way to kind of create a quick look or preset inside of Photoshop. I don't use these much, but I know a lot of people do to speed up their workflow. I'm more of a fan of taking the time to give each image a bit of love and attention and kind of balance it all out on its own. But this is a great way to save yourself some time if you don't want to take that extra bit. And I mean, and because I take so long, I've slowly gotten to the point where I edit less and less every day. 
But I believe the quality of work is kind of worth taking extra time. But I know there's certain people out there like wedding photographers or family portrait photographers that need to just bust out the edits super quick. And this is a great way to do that. So hopefully this is able to help you guys today. If it was, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. Feel free to share this on any social media you see fit. As long as my work is being shared and people are learning, I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.